Today, I want to show you a video that I did with Maria. She actually is my right-hand person when it comes to score contracts and GovCon Giants. She produces the podcast. She's behind the scenes. If you are a subscriber or a member of the GovCon Giants community, you might have had a chance to see her name on the bottom of an email. Today, the video that we want to show you is a episode where I sat down, interviewed Maria, and we had a conversation because recently she picked up her first consultant client and it was a lot easier than she thought. And what I did was I asked Maria to come on and sit down and let's just have a conversation and talk about what was required for her or from her, uh, how she felt, what she was thinking, everything behind uh, getting to the point of making the phone call and also meeting with the client face to face and what that conversation was like. That's today's video. Stay tuned. Stay for the end for a special surprise. Thanks. Today, we're having a conversation with Miriam Martinez. A lot of you know her. Uh, she is the back engine of Score Contracts and GovCon Giants making things work. She actually recently uh, landed her first consultant client, and I thought it would be great to share in on that experience of what she went through how she did it, what was in her mind, uh, kind of, you know, some of the ideas behind her thought process, behind what it took to do that. A lot of you out there may be facing some of the same experiences, and I thought this would be a great way to reflect on uh, her taking her first step towards uh, her GovCon journey and experimenting with the idea of taking on a consulting client. So uh, first and foremost, I want to welcome Maria. Hello. Hey, and, you know, Obviously, a lot of times she's in the background, so you don't really see her. Some people who are part of the score contracts team or gov contracts team, they get a chance to see her picture, but they've never actually met her in person. So, Mary, why don't you wave to everybody? Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So, first of all, uh, for the people who don't know you out there, can you tell us a little bit about your background? What types of jobs have you done in the last three years? Last three years. Actually, last four years, I was a kindergarten teacher. So I was inside of a classroom with like 25-year-olds running around in the public, public school system. So that's where I've been the last four years, teaching inside of a classroom, and now I teach online also. Okay. You said 25-year-olds? 20, like uh -huh. number 20, yeah. five-year-olds. Okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Because I thought, well, what a classroom, a bunch of 25-year-olds running around. to teach teaching no. education. <laughs> No, I taught kindergartens, babies. Okay. All right. All right. And then, so how did you come to learn about the government contract space? Um, I learned through you, actually. I went on a trip and you started talking about it. And even the first time you talked about it and showed me videos, it just went way above and beyond my head. I've never heard of it. Never even knew it existed. Even seeing the movies War Dogs, I never even put them together. Um, so just little by little with the courses, with the books, with just listening to your videos, I started gaining a little bit more knowledge. And in the last year and a half, it's just grown immensely of what I know and what I think I don't know versus normal people out there that when I talk to them, they're like, huh? So now I see the difference between where I was and what I've learned to now. Right. And, um, and those uh, beginning days, that's when um, I was still doing YouTube live and teaching people. And uh, I remember being on the trip in Puerto Rico and going into special rooms so that I could do my live conferences on YouTube and uh, having to be put aside from the group. But um, I did not, it did not stop me or prevent me from doing live sessions. I still did it even when I was out in Puerto Rico. Correct. Correct. And even when electricity wasn't as available or Wi-Fi, just because when we went, it was like only like 60 days after right. Hurricane Maria. After hurricane. Right, exactly. So, all right, now, the, obviously the conversation today is about what you did um, and what it takes to do that. Now, recently, um, and you could probably tell a story better than me, but recently you picked up uh, your first consultant client. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about the client. Um, this client, it does mechanical and AC here in South Florida. He's okay. actually been in business 
um, for about 15 years. He established his company in 2004, but he's been doing it prior before that. Um, it's established in 2004, and they've been doing a lot of, like, small jobs, commercial and private. Like, they do a lot of um, the Walgreens and Humanas down here. And he actually did one project with the Coast Guard back in 2005, and okay. he maintained that. He got his 8A about two years ago, but okay. he's never done nothing with 8A or done a government contract since then. Okay. And what made you target this client? Um, I was going through FBO on one of the days that I was either bored or, or working one of those. And I started going through FBO because I remember doing a contract with Noah and it felt so easy. And I guess when you need the money, you go looking for it. So I was just looking to see what small projects are out there. And um, and FBO, I saw a few projects down here in South Florida that I was like, oh, they sound reasonable. I think I could try and find someone to do it. Hold on. And let me interject real quick. So I, uh, you guys out there watching this, you can tell that Maria's knowledge of government contract has grown because now she starts to use acronyms and taking it for granted that you out there know <laughs> what NOAA means or FBO. So for NOAA, for all of you who don't know, stands for N-O-A-A, which is what? The National Oceanographic <laughs> Something Association. Right, exactly. So it, they basically are like the weather station. People, you see those big satellites in there, right? Right. Uh, and so she said NOAA, and it stands for N-O-A-A. So you can always Google N-O-A-A and see what the acronym means. But uh, And then she said Feb, FBO, which is FedBizOps, but I would expect the majority of you guys know. Go ahead, continue. So I saw the... The, the jobs out there and I remember talking to you about them and you simply say why don't you just find an 8a company and call them and like many of every many of us out there I just looked at you I shrugged my shoulders and I said sure and okay and just left it all right and so the theory behind that just for clarification purposes is a lot of times we are very eager and anxious to bid projects. Um, and what I like, what I, you know, the kind of the concept I talked to her about, and, the, you know, this was in, um, not, I won't say in private, but just was a regular casual conversation. I go, if you're going to bid a particular project, then, you know, my recommendation is to work with someone who has a particular social economic set aside. That way you can develop a relationship with that government entity, that agency, and start to be uh, able to get set aside products or even sole source projects. And so that's my idea when I make those types of suggestions is don't just bid, like I mean, don't just bid a project on your own unless you have an established business and things like that. But if you don't have an established business and you're trying to become like so, so a middleman, then, you know, I recommend working with a company who has a social economic um, status that they may not be putting to maximalist use. And, um, and then if you bring them to the table, what will happen is uh, you could potentially, if you develop the relationship with that agency, that entity, the Ostabu, then that can lead to further contracts. And so now it's not like just a one pop, you can build uh, an entire like backlog of potential contracts coming down. So go ahead. I just said to interject with that. <laughs> I forgot what I was, but um, so you were, I, you were describing the company, who they are, what they do, those kind of things. So I, you told me to find an eight A company, and right. I did. Um, it was easier than I thought. Um, and I went ahead and just looked up 8A companies in South Florida. Okay. How'd and you do that? And where'd you go to do that? I went to the SBA every time that he says, make sure they fill out their DSBS profile. Okay. I went in, I looked at the SBA profiles. I made sure I filtered it to just specifically 8A companies. And this one was for mechanical AC. I chose the next code. And went from there and it populated a list for me. Okay. In that list, I looked at South Florida mostly because when you filter it is by state, but I wanted it to be local. That way I build that relationship with that company and I'm able to meet with them and make sure if I need something, I could go to them instead of just picking up the phone. So I started looking at companies that are in South Florida just so I could be local and I started highlighting them one night and highlighting them. And I remember telling myself, 
I have to call them. I got the information. It's here in a spreadsheet. Now it's the scary step. And I did it at night, so I was going to wait till the morning to call. So I looked at a lot of companies because a lot of them were, their 8A was expiring. And so I take the company's name, and a lot of people ask me, but how do you know if they're doing contracts? I took the company's name, and mm -hmm. I go to FPDS, and I simply put their name in FPDS and see if they have any contracts. Okay. Some of them were doing good, which I was very happy for them. Okay. And I remember this company out there that her 8A was expiring next month, and she Ooh. had zero contracts. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I felt so bad for her. I'm like, I, 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 like, I want to work with her to at least get her one, but uh -huh. nothing. And, and you say it a lot of the times, and a lot of us don't. Like we listen, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That a lot of these companies get 8A just because, and they never do anything with it. Well, they, when I say get it because, they get it because the, someone told them about it, right? Someone told them all these contracts would be falling from the sky and all this money, and they'd be rich and all these kind of things. But you have to work it. You've got to work the program. But continue. So I, of course, crossed out those that were expiring within the next few months yeah. or just because it's, I knew it was going to take some time to get them out there. Um, so I narrowed it down. The next day, I picked up the phone. Uh, I remember standing around in my room, and I was like, I got to do it. I put the number in my phone, and I looked at it. I could not hit send. And then I put my phone down, walked around again, and I came back to my phone. And in my head, I was, like, trying to think, like, what am I going to say? Like, if I hit go, what am I going to say? Mm -hmm. So I finally got the courage. I hit the green button, and it rang. And I remember the girl picked up. And I'm like, hello? Just because I was still unsure, like, what were they were going to say. And I simply asked for the owner because okay. his name is – all the information is on SBA. I asked for his – I asked for him. They told me he was not in the office right. and if I wanted to leave a, a message for him. And I was like, sure. So I told him, hi, my name is Maria, and I just was – I just wanted to talk to him about his 8A and working to get government contract. That's all I said. Okay. And I hung up the phone, took a breath because I didn't actually speak to him. Right. And you were happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, happy. That gave me a few more minutes to try to like, what am I doing? Like, am I really doing this? And maybe five, 10 minutes later, my phone rings. Okay. And I pick it up because I have no idea who it was. Actually, it was like a New York number. Okay. And I was like, who could it be? And I'm like, hello. And he's like, hey, this is so-and-so. You just, you called me and left me a message. I was like, oh. I was like, yes, I did. So um, it was the owner calling me back. And the reason it was a New York number is because actually he was out of the country at the time. Mm. So he got the message. He called me from being out of the country, and I told him who I was, that I, was, I do government consulting for contracts. I see that you had an 8A and that you haven't used it in the last two years, in the two years that you had it, and I want to try and help to bring those opportunities to the table. Um, he sounded very, very excited. Really? He, to he told me that he's been waiting for this phone call. That he is very happy that I called because he's been waiting for someone to call him. That he's been so busy with the company and trying to run it and just doing all the small jobs down here that he just haven't had time to look into the 8A and government contracting. Wow. And that he would call me when he gets back to the U.S. Okay. All right. So, so how did you feel when you got the phone call and he said that he was excited to hear from you? Um, I, it made me laugh a little because you tell us all the time that these people are waiting for your phone call. We're the scared ones, yet they're out there. So when he told me that, I was like, huh? I was in disbelief that he would really, like it worked. <laughs> Actually, I was in disbelief that one, it worked, and two, that he was very open to the idea. Okay, of working together. 
Yeah, because in my head, I I went through all the what ifs. What if he hangs up on the phone on me? What if he just is rude? What if this? What if that? But never in my head, my what if was, what, what if, if he says yes? Yes. Right. Now, how many, how big is your list of people to call? Um, I think I had targeted four to begin okay. with. All right. So you, you start, how big was the original list? Oh, it was because it's Florida and it's AC. I think there was 65 companies. Okay. All right. 65 companies. And then um, you narrow it down to four. And how many did you call? One. <laughs> so that means you're a hundred percent. Yes. Okay. That's pretty good. My, and my first call actually worked. What made it even like, is this really happening? Okay. So that was actually on a Friday. So Monday, I get a call and it's him. Okay. Um, and he's like, hey, you called me. I'm back. What do you want to set up a meeting? Okay. And I was like, oh. Yes, of course. Um, we were at HubZone Conference, so I had told him I would be back Thursday morning. But as soon as I land, I would give him a call, and, and we'll set it up that same day. Okay. So we, I landed back in Miami. I went home, changed, and off I go to meet with him. Okay. All right. So I made sure I was prepared just because even – in my previous jobs, no one wants to go in into an interview or anything and be empty handed. All right. So I made sure there was a few things I took along. I made sure I printed his SBA profile. Okay. I made sure I pr just to show, to have some kind of knowledge of his company or even tell him, I highlighted everything that was missing mm -hmm. to improve it. Um, I printed off the three FBO jobs that I saw that potentially we could work towards to okay. get us started and okay. start building those relationships. I printed off FPDS and the number of contracts for 2018 and 2017 for his NAX code and his in Florida. Okay. All right. And I took that all with me. Okay. Nice. So we sat down. And we just started talking, like, what, what do I do? What's my background? How do I know about this? And I told him this, this, and this. Are you? Um, I told him these are the opportunities out there and the way we work. We want to build those relationships with right. the people so they get to know us, know, our, our, know our, the company. And that way we get – and the fact that he's 8A – after those relationships are built, we don't have to bid on projects anymore like mm -hmm. we're going to do now. Okay. So I showed him the three projects and he was excited. Like he was really excited and started telling me everything that he could be doing mm -hmm. and all the opportunities are there because he does AC and mechanical. He's okay. a general contractor. Right, right. He, he has, um, he knows other people that do like underground piping and asphalt. So his knowledge was good and his expertise was good. Now it's narrowing it down to get the contracts. Um, he showed me an office that he had like, okay. uh, like down the block because he said that he had somebody that worked for him prior. Right. That, but did it, that's what was, that's why he had the office, but nothing was ever done with it. What do you mean? They, they worked for him prior that did. So what? he had hired someone that came to him that was supposed to help him get it going, 8A, and get government contracts. Okay, And okay, he had this you. person on salary. Okay, all right. And, and the person him, didn't do anything? Mm -mm. So I told him, we'll start off with, we'll start off with, the basics of making sure your SBA profile is completed the right way. Your SAMS, we found out that his SAMS was expired. And so we started off with those basics. Um, and for people out there that think that this is hard, it's not as bad because the next thing he told me at the end of our meeting while we were walking to our cars was, it seems like you fell from the sky for me right now. Wow. Because he's been waiting for someone and waiting for these opportunities to come. Wow. Wow. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, you know, so now you you said you're looking at three or four projects to bid. Okay. So let's uh, fast forward to that. So now you, you've met with him. You talked. He's happy. He's <laughs> excited. Um, 
the and next what happens when the you, next uh, week I, w- I went into the office I sat down I we looked at the projects I was fixing their um, Sam profile and everything when I okay. started printing stuff up setting up site visits and I see that one of the projects, the one that we were really interested in that when Key West was expiring that same day. It was okay. Friday. And I was like, oh, no. I was like, okay. But I, we needed to go to a site visit. And it's two hours away. So I simply called the point of contact on the list, on the FBO right. solicitation. And I'm like, hi, my name's Maria. We really want to be able to bid on the solicitation but I see it expires today and we really want to go to a site visit is there any way you could extend it and I don't know what gave me the courage or the thought process to just easily pick up that phone but because I easily just picked up the phone and made that phone call he's like send me an email right now and I'll see what I can do He's like, wow. it's been on FBO for a while. They had previously extended it too. Okay. okay. And we, I called him. I called the guy the site visit. Next week, we were at a site visit, and the guy extended the project for us. Wow. It, um, because I had the, um, I, you know, I have some inside information in terms of knowledge of the experience. Um, on the actual write up for that particular project, it mentioned that there was a price component and a technical component, correct? Correct. Okay. And on the technical component, if I remember correctly, you, the persons or companies who attended the site visit were scored higher, correct? Correct. Okay. So, <laughs> so you got them to extend the site visit. You went and visit the project, which allowed you to score higher than people who did not visit the site. Yes. Okay. And right. going to the site visit is was actually – a good idea because not only they were able to see it, but we're able to make sure that we got all the details. Like it said that you had to replace one of the air handling units, but the people mentioned that if we repair them, it would, that would work too. So I came back to, with that information to the contracting officer also that he was like, huh? He's like, just write a note on it. And that now that's what they're looking at. Okay. And then, um, wow, that's wonderful stuff. That's good stuff. A lot of, uh, tidbits, a lot of nuggets in that. Um, on the other site at the Coast Guard, talk about, let's talk about that one. So within that same, so this is week number two only. So okay. on week two, we went to actually three site visits. So right. things were moving and it was very, I guess you don't have even a chance to stop and think of and process what everything that's going on. So I went to the Coast Guard. The owner went to Key West and one of his technicians went to Bradenton, Florida for a third site visit. So all three of us are moving, going at the site visit at Coast Guard. um, I was early. Mm. You told me to be early. Make sure I got there. Um, And because I was early, I was escorted to the building that we were going to do the site visit before everybody else came. So while I was there waiting, the point of contact, which is the facilities person for the Coast Guard base right. there, he started talking to me. He's like, oh, sign in. So I signed in. He's like, oh, you're with so-and-so. He's like, oh, they, I know who they are. They're 8A. He's like, and we started talking about it, like how he hasn't done anything in two years. He's like, why don't you stay behind after everybody leaves? Because I have another project that we need to get done. And if you're 8A, we could work together, and if I'm able to have these projects completed by just picking up the phone and calling you directly other than bidding, we're good. Wow. wow. So we did the site visit. I stayed behind, and he walked me over to another part of the base, showed me exactly what he wanted. He's like, whenever you get a plumber, because it's for piping, whenever you right. could, if you need a site visit to come and look at this with somebody right. else, just give me a call. We'll set it up, and I'll, let, I'll lead you right to it. Wow, wow, wow. So we're doing that this week. <laughs> okay. No, that's, that's good stuff. So uh, the, you know, you started out with uh, looking at uh, a few projects, then that expanded to additional products that you could potentially get sole sourced. Correct. Wow. Wow. No, that's, um, that's some good stuff. Uh, you, you know, another thing that, I'm, uh, that you didn't mention 
Um, you said that the owner was also happy to introduce you to some other companies that were looking to expand into the federal arena as well. Yes. Um, he has a, a business partner, not a partner, but he knows somebody that does general contracting and does right. design build and sure. does an acquaintance at, or something. Yeah. And does asphalt and driveways. He does it for like, um, the state and cities. He does okay. their driveways. So he wants to be able to, for us to find contracts and because he's 8A, he'll sub him out. And okay. then they right. got into a conversation that once his 8A is almost expired, then we could go to him and he could do 8A and they could continue working together. And okay. also he has another acquaintance that he actually does underground piping. Okay. All right. Wow. And so you were able to, by uh, making that one initial call touch with all three of these different uh, companies and business owners. Yep. Wow. And so um, going from a teacher to now working with <laughs> five million dollar companies, <laughs> you know, does it feel like it's beyond your capabilities? Oh, <laughs> that's, I don't even know how to answer that because yes and no. Okay. N it is beyond my capabilities because I never thought I would go from teaching ABCs and counting to 20 and for my salary to be nothing uh -huh. to seeing contracts just like the Key West one be like three times my salary. Right, right. And just the wording of the proposals and this and calling this person and talking to the chief something on the Coast Guard and this person here, right. I've ever thought I would be there. And no, because even showing up to site visits and even going to these companies, the fact that I will, I'm a woman and I'm like all but five one and I'm the only one there. When I start talking, they are very surprised. So I surprise myself when I talk about government contracting and how things work and what we need and sending off proposals or my proposal was like 42 pages. Nice. nice. So it went from that and I surprised myself You're of my, of my, <laughs> Uh -huh. I, I surprised myself of how far I came so okay. far and what I've been doing these last few, this last year. Nice. No, um, that's good stuff. You know, but before we close out, um, and you don't have to say any names of the person. I know that you shared the story in the group and a couple of people reached out to you um, and they experienced some similar success. Yes. Um, you always, tell me I don't understand why people don't share and I say that I'm a normal brain person and I'm like because it's not that we want it we don't want to jinx it I think it's because we don't see our small steps as big ones so I took it upon myself I'm like you know what this is awesome like I'm here I'm actually doing it I'm like let me share it in the group and it's I like share the science group I'm yes our, group. the private Facebook group okay all right but, go ahead I shared it there and I put pictures and stuff and seeing that people reactions to it and people reached out to me um, and the fact that that small thing motivated them to pick up the phone themselves and call or try to find out how they could do it. I think that's amazing just because especially in the group, we have to be motivating each other regardless of how small our actions are, at least we are taking action instead of just listening to videos and courses. But really, I, but, but what happened next? I wanted to hear this. What's the story that happened next? So she said that she had a business card in her, on her for the last okay. month of an 8A company that she met. At a conference and, or something, right? Yeah. Okay. And she's been looking at this card for this last month trying to decide whether she's going to reach out to them. And she looked at the card and she had it there and it just kept going in her head. And that same day she picked up the phone and called them. After seeing your post. Yes. After okay. seeing the post and she went ahead and called right. and they were over the moon to hear from her. Right. And same thing. They set up a meeting a few days later and yeah. talking about she, like for the few days in between setting up the meetings, they were just going back and forth of different projects they could do, right. what they could do together. The person has like 
point of contact with different agencies and she wanted them to talk to them also. Yeah. So uh -huh. hopefully it, it's going great for now. So that's what we have to focus on, like the now and how we could keep yeah. going. No, like I tell everyone, you know, take the first step, go to the stop sign. And then once <laughs> you get to the stop sign, decide whether to turn right, left or go straight. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to know, um, you know, the full picture of how it's going to pan out. But again, uh, with you are watching the videos, if you're learning, if you're uh, taking the free classes, if you've looked at or, or you're on my email list or any of those doing any thing like that, um, you're attending conferences, events, going to trainings, uh, seminars, webinars, you have more knowledge than 99% of the people out there because they're not doing those things. Um, so I think that was great. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we are going to take a deep dive further uh, and we'll have that where we actually go through the steps that she did. Uh, we're going to go through the sites and we're going to have Maria walk us through some examples and we'll put all that information inside the course. Uh, anything else you want to say before we leave? Uh, just thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you for not your videos because I still go back to the course, go back to the course, um, listen to him, take his word and we can't live in the fear of failure. We have to live more in the fear of success that if we don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. So over stop that fear and make that phone call or do just do. And you're going to see that things actually start happening. Okay. Thank you so much.